Jeff. Oh, great. Thank you very much, Eric. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, it, it's funny, when, when Brenda asked the question about how many people here wouldn't touch property management with a 10-foot pole, you know, everybody raised their hand. How do you feel about open houses? Be honest with me. Who, who, who likes them? Okay, who hates them? Okay. Who, I mean, who hates them even worse than just hating them? This one, yeah. What do you hate about them? Seems like a waste of time, most of the time. Waste of time? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of them are. Huh? huh? You feel like it's a hit or miss? What else? Who, who else had their hand raised? You, you did. Yeah. Why do you hate them? It just killed my weekend. <laughs> just kills the weekend, right? Yeah, it does. Okay. You know, I, I know how you feel. Um, I speak with realtors all over the country. I hear the, the same thing all over the place. Uh, they complain a lot about open houses. And one of the biggest complaints is that the people who come in lie on the sign-in sheet. Does that happen here in North Carolina? <laughs> but you can. Now I know up in the Bronx they lie, but uh, <laughs> here in you know, only Charlotte? the ones that moved down and stayed are the ones that lie. Oh, okay, okay. So the native North Carolinians don't don't lie. Right. Just the people who moved down from New York. Yeah. I can believe that. <laughs> okay. Um, who here has had an open house, like a three-hour open house? Nobody showed up. I spoke with an agent a few weeks ago about that. I said, well, what would you do for the three hours? He said, well, for the first hour, he was, I just sort of paced up and down. He was looking out the front door, hoping somebody will slow down and stop. <laughs> Second hour, I finally decided I was going to sit down and get the remote and watch TV. He goes, the third hour, I went through the medicine cabinet looking for drugs to take. He says, it was that bad, Joe. So, okay, I guess it was that bad. I got work done online. Huh? I got my work done online. I just, I brought my computer. You brought your computer? It worked, yeah. And, and did work? Yeah. That's great. Who has problems with their sellers sometimes? You ever have a seller who wanted to stay for the open house? No. Yeah? No, you never had that? No. Oh, boy. When that happens, you've got something. They, because they can't understand, why, why do I have to leave my own house? Some people say, why do I have to leave? Okay. What are the problems you have with the open houses? Nosy neighbors. Nosy neighbors. Nosy neighbors. What do they, what do they, what do they want? I always wanted to see. I knew I was a better housekeeper than her. <laughs> they go through the cabinets. See, do they buy... Generic food or regular food? All right. What else? I haven't done an open house, but I have a concern about security and safety. That is a very, very big concern, safety and security. Now, everything that we discussed that is a problem, we're going to cover today. Now, who said they love the open houses? Okay. And why do you love them? I have pretty good... Um return for you know I, I've met quite a few people um, especially the couple weekends that I've done recently just this month I got a listing out of just a nosy neighbor coming over um, which was really good yeah and then I, I've got a couple buyers that I'm keeping up with and but they're biting back so right that's good so okay that but I like them I mean it's a good way to get out and meet okay people. I want to show you today how to make every single open house from now to the end of your career be very, very productive. Okay? Um, so, who here has sold an open house at the open house, the day of the open house? Anybody? Not the same day. Okay. Let me ask you this. We have the NAR uh, open house weekend. April 20th, 21st. Who here has a listing for that weekend right now? 20th and 21st. Has has a, a, a listing that you want to promote? Yes? Okay. Well, here's the thing I'm going to tell you. Most of you probably don't have that listing yet. Because one of the reasons why you want to do this it gives you a prospecting, a closing reason. 
you go on listing appointments now and close them on being in the open house weekend, open house for you. Chances are the listing you have right now, if it's not sold, may not be a great candidate for the open house. Who here has ever had an open house? Be honest. Be, who ever, ever had an open house just to shut up the homeowner? Okay. They tell you, well, do an open house. And how did you feel about that? Sometimes a little annoyed, especially if they are not cooperative with some other recommendations I might have. But uh -huh. they want me to spend my weekend sitting at their house. Right. You feel a little resentful sometimes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I always felt that we should be resentful because of the fact that they're telling us how to do our job. Okay? And maybe it's not a good house for an open house. Very possibly. Okay. Now, here's what the NER Nationwide Open House Weekends means to you. It means to all realtors. And let me tell you something. It's a big splash all across the country. The only problem is what I found the last few years is a lot of realtors don't even know that it's coming up until it's that weekend. You know, they find out on Friday. That, huh? When? T tomorrow? Okay. It gives that opportunity to promote the Realtor logo and educate the public. Now, I found out over my last 35, 36 years in real estate, the agents who educate the public the most are usually the most successful. Because that's what sales is all about, educating. Okay? We know that, well, here, here's something that drives me crazy. Over the last few years, I'll see postings on Facebook or on the internet or whatever, and it says, now is the time to buy. Oh, okay, so tell me when is not a good time to buy. Can anybody tell me, tell me when is not a good time to buy? Now is the time to sell. <laughs> How many of you have ever gone to a listing appointment and say, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I would love to take your listing, but let's put it all for a few years. <laughs> all right? Okay, so we're going to educate the public. And, and I think that you're going to see, like, like, like Eric was saying, you're going to get a lot of publicity out of this. Okay, you're gonna have greater exposure of your listings to potential purchasers. Not just this listing, but if you get them as a purchaser to your other listings. <clears throat> There's an opportunity for buyers to, and I know you hate this term, window shop and compare. But let's be honest, open houses on a weekend, what do most buyers do? Do they just say, I'm gonna to go to this one? They're going to go window shop, correct? Do, do you sort of resent that a little bit? How many of you window shop? Yeah, of course. You don't go buy the, the first dress you see. You're going to go window shopping, right? So why should we resent them for window shopping? After all, we're not buying a $50 dress. We're buying maybe a $500,000 home. So I think they have the right. We have to understand that. It's also a great source of prospecting activity for both purchasers and sellers. One of the things I love best about open houses is it's a great opportunity for prospecting for new listings. As you will see, I'm going to give you about a half a dozen <coughs> different ways we're going to do that. Now, how can you make the most of the NAR Nationwide Open House Weekend? First of all, preparation. Now, your time is impeccable. It's, it's a month away. By the way, today's the first day of spring, right? Yeah. Happy That's spring. Fun. Yeah, that's nice. We just had snow two days ago in New York. I saw a thing on Facebook. It showed the, uh, the groundhog pumps of Tony Phil. It says, I'm a rodent, not a meteorologist. So, okay. So, what listings do I have that are best suited for an open house? Now, a couple of people said they have a listing already. You said you have a listing, right? What, why is that a good listing for an open house? Because it's new to the market. I just listed it last week. Just listed it last week? Okay. What else? Uh, it shows well. I mean, it's a nice home. Nice home? It's got a good location. Great location? Anything else? No, it makes my seller happy. <laughs> makes your seller happy? All right. Price right? Yeah, I think so. It's new what, 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 to the market, but yeah, I think it's priced right. I did the calls. 
No, wait a second. <laughs> You're a realtor. Yeah. You're a pro. Yes. And I asked you, is it priced right? Yes. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> That's like going to a doctor and saying, doctor, is it my appendix? Yeah. Mm. I think so. Well, when I think in the fire things, I'm too Ah! <laughs> but the thing is, you, you know, based on your research, yes. okay? Here's the thing. It's very, very important. Now, what list, now, it sounds like a great listing. What is plan B if it sells April 15th? Okay. What if it sells April 1st? <laughs> I'll probably have to find another listing. You're going to have to find another listing. Okay. Now, here's another thing that we don't always ask, but will the homeowner be cooperative? A lot of homeowners don't like you to go around and notify the neighbors. A lot of homeowners don't like signs. That always drove me crazy. I want to sell my house, I want top dollar, no, no signs. No open houses. Just shh, keep it secret. You ever, get, you ever get that? Is it easy enough to prospect the neighborhood because that in fact we do want to notify the neighborhood? Now that's one of the things in selecting a home for an open house too is is it a nice development where you can walk from house to house, or is it one of these things where it's way out in the country and your next uh, door neighbor is you know, a mile and a half away? Okay, So those are the things that you want to look at, too. Does the home show well? You said yes. That's great. And it's very important. I've seen some homes that look like you know, they belonged in the Adams Family movie. Okay, And they hold them open. Why? Is it reasonably priced? You're saying yes? Yep. So far we're doing good. Now, here's another thing. Are there other listings in the area that might be held open as well that weekend? Why would I want to know that? Huh? So you can compete? Okay. Now, do you want me to teach you something that's a... Uh, a little bit nasty. I'm from New York. You know it's a little bit nasty. If I had a listing and I wanted to help open, I would find other listings in the area that were priced higher and tell those listing agents, why don't you have an open house this weekend? We'll work off of each other's signs and marketing. Yeah, that's a good idea. Except for mine's 249, yours is 312. So who looks good? Now that's not real bad, just a little bit. Okay. So yeah, you actually want other open houses from competing brokers at the same time as yours. Because it does bring much more traffic. Alright? They see the signs, they see the ads, they see the internet postings. They see the Facebook postings. Everything to bring more activity to your open house. So yeah, I used to quite often call up competing brokers and say, geez, I'm going to have an open house next weekend. Do you want to have one also on your listing on uh, Maple Grove Drive? We'll try to feed off of each other's activity. Works great. Okay? It's a lot better than having an open house with only one person showing up. Now, what I'm going to suggest is that as you promote for the NAR open house weekend, you very liberally use the Realtor logo, but also the Realtor Nationwide Open House Weekend logo. How many people are on Facebook? Raise your hand high, I want to see. Okay, so quite a few of you. I would suggest if you're going to have a listing uh, held open for the NAR Open House Weekend, you use this logo a lot to promote it. Now, what do I usually see on Facebook? Mm -hmm. I see what you had for lunch yesterday. <laughs> I see things like, you know, here's a picture of my dog chasing his tail. You ever see those pictures? Yeah. Drive me crazy. But the fact of the matter is, this is an opportunity to use Facebook as a really good, or Twitter, as a really good promotion because just like I said just like 
a lot of realtors don't know till the last minute it's the NAR open house weekend. A lot of the public doesn't know either. So you've had friends on Facebook who are, who are potential purchasers or sellers. It's a great opportunity to promote that. Now, here's what I'm going to suggest. If you want to have a dynamite open house, this is not something where on Wednesday you decide to have an open house on Sunday. You really, really want to prepare. So let's go through. Just like how many people remember in English class when you had to write something, the English teacher would tell you who, what, where, when, why, and how. You remember that? Okay. I get reminded all the time I have. My daughter is a high school English teacher, and my son is a um, university professor, University of Arkansas professor of English. So I get told all the time this, who, why, what, where, when, how. So let me ask you this. If you are planning this three weeks ahead of time, and you're going to come up with a written plan for your open house, <laughs> let's start with who. Well, who are you going to invite to your open house? Everyone. Everyone? Everyone? I'm going back to New York. I don't think I can make it. You may have certain targets. Who? Let's talk about specifics. Who? Well, your database. Your database. Okay, now that is great, and I'm so glad to hear that, and you're so right on the nose. How many agents say they're going to do it, but don't do it? That's another thing, okay? So your entire database, who else might you invite to your open house? You may have a certain target market that you need to invite, maybe try to get mailing lists and so forth for those targeted people. Maybe. Man, do you have any uh, 55 and better communities here? Yeah. You notice I didn't say 55 and older. <laughs> 55 and better. Okay. I always like that. Um, so 55 and better communities, you have that. So who are you going to target? You're not going to put postings on the, uh, um, where, where would you put that? In a young hip hop club, right? <laughs> What are you laughing at? Maybe I go. No? All right. So, so now, who else might you notify? Other agents. That's what I was looking for. Other agents, specifically those who have shown the house previously, or who you know are very active in that area. Okay? Who else? The neighbors, correct? Now that's another thing where um, I often find realtors, you know, they say they're going to invite the neighbors, but they never really do it. We're going to show you some easy ways to do that today. Okay, what? What are you going to do to make your open house special? People like to get free stuff. Maybe have a drawing. Like what? What kind of drawing? It could be a gas card. This way you'll hopefully get the correct phone number to follow up with them. Yeah. You know, if you tell them you're going to you know, select someone after the event, you will contact them. Okay. What would the value of the gas card be? You don't mind me asking. To drive so they can get to, all the, um, to, get to look at home. I mean, how much? Oh, the value. I'm sorry. Yeah. $25. 25 Okay. Got to make it worthwhile. Got to make it worthwhile. Okay. okay. All right. Good. What else are you going to do to make it special? Have some refreshments. Have some refreshments. Nice, nice in the background. big bowl of ice cubes, a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> yeah. Right? Absolutely. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. No? Okay. If it's a home that... I never would leave the open house. <laughs> if it's a home that might cater to entertainment or someone that likes to entertain, maybe you want some sort of special entertainment there. Special yeah. entertainment. Do you juggle? <laughs> no. Okay. 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 Uh, what kind of entertainment is on about? I mean, I watch HGTV. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I singing, singing. I know jazz players. And those okay, guys. great. Like something to promote. That's good. The use of the house nice. for entertainment. Purposes. Very nice. If I sang, I guarantee you, <laughs> nobody would say. <laughs> okay, so where? Where are you going to market this? 
Where are you going to promote it? MLS. MLS? In the neighborhood? You say the websites? Your websites. Your websites? Okay. Zillow, Trulia. Very, very good. Very, very important. You know, a lot of us don't really promote our open houses as well as we can. Put on as many open on um, as many realtor websites as possible. How many realtor websites does your listings go on? I, it, I'm going to say at least at least a hundred. At least a hundred, okay? So you want to put it and make sure you promote it on all of those websites. Okay, now when, and when I say when, when, when is the best time to have an open house? When do you want to have an open house? Depending on where it's located? Okay. So give me a day. You have Saturday afternoon? Anybody else? You like Sundays? What about weekdays? In the evening? Well, let me tell you, something. now that we have um, the daylight savings time and it stays lighter a little bit longer, during the week, evening open houses are great. They're, they're fantastic. But traditionally, we do them on the weekends, Saturday or Sunday. What time? Two to four. Anybody do it different? One to three? Twelve to two? Eleven to one? Three to five? Is there a bad time? Yeah. When people are in church, it's not when you want to do it. Not unless you're selling the church, right. I know. Okay. I agree. I agree. Uh, let me ask you this. What if I told you the worst time might be two to four? And you know why? Everybody That's when everybody else is doing it. I asked you, when do you have, right away, like four or five people popped up, two to four, two to four, two to four. Okay? When do you have the least amount of activity in your open house? Two to three forty-five. Two to three forty-five. You're right. And in the last 15 minutes, a couple couples rush there. And they're so exhausted, okay, they go in and they just say, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, it's a house. So here's the thing. If most people are having it from two to four, what if you had it from one to three? Might you get a little bit better early crowd? And they feel a little bit more relaxed? What if you had it from three to five? What if you had it from noon to three? Folks, be a little different. One of the things I learned, and this is going back, oh, many, many, many years ago, I took a training course uh, from the um, dean of Disney University. And one of the things, and this is going back a long, long time ago, but one of the things he taught us in the early days of Disney World was that if you wanted to see more of the park and wait less on the lines, when you first walk in and you face uh, Cinderella Castle, okay, 80% of the people go right. Why? Because you're on the right side of the road. Go left. Now, one of the things I've learned about in real estate is this. Be different. You don't have to do everything the way everybody else does. You can be a little different. How many people have ever gone to a listing presentation and heard the homeowner say, Ah, oh, all your realtors are alike? You ever hear that? I can honestly say that's one objection I never heard. I've heard, you're crazy. But I've never heard you like everybody else. Because I do like to differentiate myself, and I think that you can differentiate yourself. So think about that. Now, is there any reason why you couldn't have like open house weekend um, 12 to 2, and then another one from 3 to 5? And really capture? <coughs> Absolutely not. Okay. So why are we even doing this? Why do we have open houses? Prospect. 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 You know, it's a funny thing. I, I, I was talking with Eric before. It, it's amazing 
I, I think that when you look at a short term effect and you say, mm, okay, I'm gonna have an open house. Five people come through, nobody makes an offer, and agents look at it as a failure, okay? Out of those five people, probably all five will buy within six months to a year. Maybe some next week, maybe some eight months from now, but most of them will buy. Otherwise, why would they even be out? Now I hear things like, oh, they're trying to get decorating ideas. No, they're not. <laughs> I'm gonna get decorating ideas, I'm gonna go to a decorating store, okay? Or they say, oh, they just want, you know, they have nothing else to do, it's a cheap Sunday. No, not really. It's expensive driving around with all the gas money today, right? How much are you paying for gas prices here? What do you pay for regular? Okay, all right, that's, that's still up there. That's not too bad. We're paying about four right now, but okay. Why do you have an open house? Do you know why I have an open house? Multiple reasons. I'm looking for buying prospects. I'm looking for selling prospects. Yes, I am looking to make my homeowner happy. I may even be looking to get a price adjustment on the listing, okay? I'm looking to my short-term and long-term benefits. I might sell this house. Yes, I do try to sell the house. Other open, I try to sell it, okay? I'm not ashamed of being a salesperson. Anybody here? Anybody ashamed here of being a salesperson? Is everybody here a salesperson? I think one of the greatest lines I ever heard about this uh, agent who uh, been in real estate for three years and three years never did a deal. Someone finally asked him, says, look, if I dragged you into a court of law and accused you of being a salesperson, would there be enough evidence to convict you? <laughs> think about that. So, yes, you have an open house. A lot of us like to take a laid back approach. You know, oh, no, 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 I'm not trying to sell you. Yes, I am. That's why I'm here. Otherwise, I could be home on a Sunday. <clears throat> so how are we going to do this? Well, that's what the rest of this program is all about. Now, we talk about promoting the, the, the open house, getting a lot of people over there. And we talk about people on social media, Facebook, a lot of people on Facebook. Um, here's one of the things a lot of people, though, don't even realize. I don't know if anybody here does this. Probably some of you do, some of you don't. But Facebook can be a great way to promote an open house in particular, simply because of the fact that if you go to your Facebook page and you see where it says events, right? You click on events. Hello? There we go. And it comes up with this page. And it says, create event. Now, this is the easy part. You hit create event, and you get this page. And with this page, you can put in all the details. Now, as you know, on Facebook, when you have events, they stay on your page for what? a week or two, or three, or a month until the event occurs, correct? You can advertise your open house for like three weeks ahead of time, and all of the people that are your friends on Facebook will know it, because they're going to be reminded constantly. Because every, every once in a while you just click on an event, like once every two days, just to see, oh yeah, open house, forgot about that. So, here's the thing. You create this event name, here it says birthday party, put public open house or NAR Open House Weekend. Details. Now, we're going to give you some more information later on about the details. But I will tell you this. The last thing that you want to start putting in is four-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath colonial, nestled on beautiful half-acre rolling green. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Boring. We're going to show you something else that you can put where you can put the address, when, and then you can add the time from 
one to three. Who do you want to see it? Just friends or public? Public. In fact, you even want your friends to share it, don't you? Get all the publicity there is. How many people have done create a new event for open house? You've posted, but not this. See, that's the thing. You post it, and when I go to my Facebook page, sometimes, you know, I, I don't look at it for a day or two. I'll miss that posting, right? Or, you know, you see it, but then you scroll down because there's a funny picture of a baby playing with a squirrel in the backyard. Okay? <laughs> things like that. I don't know. Crazy things. But when you create this as an event, it's going to stay. Now, I would post it also, but keep it as an event because it's going to be on your Facebook page for now till the day of the event. That's a really cool way of increasing the attendance. All right? So, so far, have you learned something new? Yes. Oh, we haven't even started yet. Here's some additional attendance ideas. Now, all previous open house attendees in this price range. You said to me, young lady, before the class started, you have like an open house every weekend, right? What if you invited all the people that came to all the previous open houses? A personal invitation. Now, think about this. I have an open house last weekend. Seven people show up. I invite them to this open house this weekend. Maybe four of the seven show up, plus an additional five. Now, all of a sudden, we have another one two weeks from now, and I invite all the people who came to the previous open houses, and especially if you're a nice person, which I think you are from what I've spoken to, they're going to like, oh yeah, let's go see her open house. All of a sudden, two, three months down the road, guess what? You have built in 25, 30 people come to your open house. How impressive is that to the homeowner, who, by the way, has neighbors spying on you, yeah. yes? Yeah. To see if you're getting activity, okay? How easy it is then to have like all of a sudden 35, 40 people come to your open house and you don't get it sold so now you go to, for a price adjustment. Do you have a good reason, a valid reason for a price adjustment from the homeowner? Absolutely. Geez, we had 35 people show up. No one made a, an offer. The comments we've gotten is the fact that it's a lovely home, but it's over market value. So who here has ever thought about that? Keeping a record and inviting all other previous open house attendees. Now, is it true? A lot of people will shop for homes for six months or longer and every week and go to open houses. My, my two daughters did. Yeah, my two daughters did. Okay. All realtors who had previously shown this house, we mentioned that before. Now, flyers in local business establishments with their permission. So, do you frequent a certain dry cleaner? And do they want to keep your business? So, if you ask them if you could post it in their window, might they let you? Or on their shelf? Yeah. Do you frequent a certain, um, I don't know, delicatessen? No? Do you have delicatessens here? <laughs> Sorry, a slip up. <laughs> Not a New York deli. Okay. So what do you have here? Fish camps. <laughs> huh? Fish camps. Fish camps. Why not? People go to fish camps, correct? And especially if you're selling a, a, a home near the water. Ask them if you could turn around, post a flyer at your o upcoming open house. What else? You have barber shops, don't you? Yeah, they look nice and neat. Nail salons. Nail salons? Nope, got to go. Okay. <laughs> All these business establishments that you frequent, ask them for permission to post a flyer. 
Now, are there a lot of other people who go to those business establishments? Absolutely. Hardware stores? Yeah? There's all sorts of things that you can do. Okay. Multiple signs. Now, this is very, very key. It has been proven through lots of studies the optimal number of arrow signs. Let's say open house. They put on the street corners. How many should you have? Let me guess. A lot. Can we get a little bit more specific? 10 to 15? Actually, they say a minimum of 8. A minimum of 8. Now, here's the good thing. Nowadays, they're made out of this corrugated cardboard, and they're very, very reasonably priced, okay? When I first started in real estate, you know, we had to carve it into the stone of the cave and then cut it out, stuff like that. But the fact that it is, today it's very, very cheap. Here's the other thing. Do you put riders on your sign sometimes? Okay. Riders also very, very cheap. I don't know, $15, $19, something like that. If you have one that says open Sunday, 1 to 3, or whatever, put it on the for sale sign five days in advance. You have no idea, even in the most remote community, how many people drive by. And if they drive you through that community, they have an interest in that community. So I would suggest you do that. And then the morning, the early morning of your open house, get at least eight of those open house arrow signs. Now you might say, oh, I don't want to spend the money on that. Now, if you think about how much money you will waste in your life. Come on, who here has bought stuff and then you get home and you say, why did I buy that? This, right, that happened. This is an investment. This is an investment. Trust me, you, you will never regret that investment. So, so there's only four turns to get in from the subdivision to get to the house. You're saying to double up these signs to have... Growth. Get it from the main roads right. and, and, and have it all over. Isn't it funny how buyers sometimes just show up out of nowhere? Right? When you have those, in fact, here's a very recent study. With all of the internet postings, Facebook postings, Twitter postings, everything else, 100 different websites, what was the one thing that brought more buyers to an open house than anything else? Yard signs. Yard signs. That's why it's such a great investment. Okay. Now here's some other special invitations. First one is knocking on the doors of the neighbors. So let's just talk about that for a minute, okay? If, you're, if, I, if I'm one of the neighbors, you come knock on my door, what are you going to say to me? How are you going to approach me? Um, ask if you have a buyer that may be interested in the home you're telling you're having an open house. No. Yeah. Just throw it out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I threw it back. That's all right. Just like um, advise them that you are having an open house in case they see extra activity. Say it to me as though I am the owner, the neighbor. Oh, right. Just like roll play. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, just, I don't want to use those words because it scares people. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know I will be holding an open house next door to your home uh, this coming, uh, this afternoon and I um, wanted to give you a heads up in case you see some extra traffic and also welcome, you're welcome to stop by also. I'll have some refreshments and I'd love to have you visit. Thank you. <laughs> will you be coming? <laughs> Will you be serving Jack Daniels? <laughs> no, actually, uh, very, very nice. Couple little things. One is you said, I'm going to be having the house next door to you held open this afternoon. Yeah. Waiting too long to notify the neighbors. 
I like to notify the neighbors three to five days in advance. Okay? And here's why. How many people, who's been in real estate, anybody, first of all, anybody in real estate as long as I am? 30, 35 years. 30, almost 36. No? Okay. Who's been there for more than 20 years? Okay. Anybody more than 10 years? Okay, 10 years, good. If you've been in real estate for 10 years or longer, you definitely know this for a fact. How many times do you see a listing come out and within a month, another listing pops up on that same street? Happens all the time. That's why I love talking to the neighbors about this. Happens all the time. Now, if you tell them it's gonna be this afternoon, they may, especially on a weekend, they may have made plans already. But they would like to see it, okay? Or they would have liked to have told their cousin who wants to buy in the area, okay? Or their, you know, tell their, their um, um, brother-in-law, sister and brother-in-law who have to fly down from Brooklyn to see it so they can retire here in beautiful Charlotte area, okay? Don't laugh. I may be doing it. I may be joining you down here. Are you kidding me? After that last snowstorm? Whew. So, here's what I like to do. Who wants to be, who wants to be the, the neighbor? Come on. I'm taking the tough part. I'll be the agent. Yeah, I'm picking on him a lot already. But since you volunteered, okay. All right. No, just sit right there. Sit right there. Hi, how you doing? My name is Joe Meyer from Pathetic Realty. You have that? <laughs> is that franchise here? No? Okay. My name is Joe Meyer from Pathetic Realty. The reason I'm stopping by today is because, in effect, I want to let you know that this Saturday, if you have no plans, from 1 to 3, I'm having an open house in one of your neighbor's homes. They recently hired me to market their home. And this is such a beautiful neighborhood, I figured for sure you might know somebody who is thinking about perhaps moving in here. Maybe. Or maybe perhaps has to move out for business reasons or whatever. Either way, I want to invite you. We're having a very special open house this weekend. <laughs> Our theme is... Ooh. <laughs> okay? And we'd love you to stop by. Okay? In fact, it's from 1 to 3, but I will, I'm going to extend a special invitation to the neighbors to come 15 minutes earlier if they would like. Okay. Hope to see you there. Sounds like fun. I always yeah. want to see the inside of that house. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's neat. Really, I got pictures. <laughs> so now, here's the thing. Enthusiastic? Yeah. 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 Now, how many people here know what a 10, 10, and 20 is? No? Okay. This is the house that I'm listing. I am the house. 10 houses to the left, 10 houses to the right, 20 across the street. Those are the ones that you definitely want to knock. 10 to the left, 20 across the street. 10 to the left, 10 to the right, 20 across the street. Why? Because those people probably definitely know the person who is selling the house. Okay. <clears throat> oh, uh, one other thing. If they're right next door on either side or right across the street, is there a chance that there's going to be a lot of traffic and parking in front of their house? <clears throat> one of the things I like to do is after I finish my open house, just stop by those one or two or three houses and give them a little gift thanking them. Doesn't have to be anything expensive. It could be a little two dollar plant you picked up somewhere or something like that. Nothing expensive. Five dollar gift uh, gas card. But here's the thing: is it also a way of them remembering you? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. It's just in a location where there's very little parking or like a cul-de-sac. Would it be worthwhile to check with the neighbors in advance to maybe get their approval to do that? No. I don't need their approval. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. But let's say it's a cul-de-sac. Um, by letting them know in advance, let's put it this way. What if they say, I don't want you to have an open house here? 
<laughs> well, I didn't mean what are you going to do then? I didn't mean that, but at least to, you know, notify them there may be traffic and so forth. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I might do that if it's like a cul-de-sac or something like that. Okay. Yeah. But if they turn around and they say to you, I, I will refuse to let you have an open house here. Mm. And that's why your neighbor is selling. No. <laughs> only teasing. Only teasing. But, yeah. Oh, didn't uh, mean. If you're going to visit the people five to six days in advance, would it be um, a good thing to leave them with a flyer or a postcard after you've talked to them? You could bring it that day. Bring it the same day of the opening. The day, no, the day that you... Like, Stop by. Yes, because you're going in advance. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Very good. Would you, uh, would you give a gift to all four people? No, 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 no. Just maybe that immediately to the one immediately to the left, the one immediately to the right, because they're the ones going to be the most uh, inconvenience. Okay. And the one across the street. That that that's all. Okay. Any other questions about notifying your neighbors? Now, if you wanted to do a mailing. Or door knocking for another hundred, that'd be great. That's that's fine. That's not a problem at all. Now, two very, very special invitations to your open houses. How many people here consistently, I mean consistently, work the physical market? You just started. No excuse. Okay. How many people here consistently work the expired market? How many people here consistently avoid anything that has confrontation? <laughs> yeah? I love this post. And I love expireds. So much so, my first month in the business, I took 13 listings, all FISBOs. Now, I prospected about 200, and I didn't know anything. I was dumb as a stump, okay? But one of the things that I learned was I didn't have a lot of competition. And guess what? Neither do you. And do you know that still about 90%, I think it's the exact number is 87%, no, 93%. 93% of all for sale by owners do eventually list with a broker. Why not you? Anybody here good? Who's a good agent? I mean good. You, you, I'm going to be good. So, so now we're, we're forecasting the future. Okay. Okay. Who here is good? Yes? Are you good? Yes. You sure? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I sense a little doubt. Like, mm, what day is it? Today? Yeah. Okay. So you're good. So let me ask you something. Why wouldn't you give of yourself to these poor, unfortunate, for sale by owners? <laughs> to guide them into listing with you? That's a good question. See, I, that's why I always looked at it. I was so good, I couldn't let them possibly fall in the hands of a terrible broker. I told them, you got to listen with me. It's for your own good. <laughs> I told you I wasn't that great, but I was enthusiastic. Yeah. Let me ask you something. And, and, and I don't want to hear any names or disparage anybody, but have you ever known a realtor out there who you would not consider to be a real pro? All right. Somebody who maybe just might be in real estate, might be slightly better than like a road dead group, right? Now, don't those agents get listings still? Why? It's the Woody Allen clothes. Woody Allen said 90% of life is just showing up. If there's a FISBO out there, why don't you show up? 
The same thing with expireds. Now, the market's shifting, correct? But there's still a lot of expired listings out there. A lot. Especially if you go back six months or so. There's a ton of expired listings. Well, here's what I always suggest that you do. If you want to have great open houses and make a lot of money, start prospecting. I don't care how good or bad you think you are. Okay? And please, do me a favor. Don't ever say, I'm waiting till I know everything. <laughs> I'm still not there. And I know a lot. Okay? But if you start prospecting FISBOs or expires, here's what I suggest you do. You knock on their doors. You try to do a listing presentation. You try to persuade them. Who here has ever been on a FISBO appointment? Anybody? Anybody ever, and, and you give up, right? And they didn't want to list with you. How about this? What if you turn around and say, you know what? I know you're being cautious. I also know there's a 93% chance you are going to list with a broker. I think you owe it to yourself just to see how I work. This Sunday, I'm having an open house on 42, um, you know, Adams Drive. Please, feel free, no pressure. I'll just say hello and goodbye. Stop by, just see how I work, okay? Now, here's the cool thing. If you prospect on a consistent basis, like I did, you might see 25 FISBOs a week. You might see another 20 expired listings a week. If you got none of them, but invited them all to your open house just to see how you work. Now, they're curious because they want to see how the pros do it. Let me ask you this. When they come to your open house, what do they look like? Buyers. <laughs> yeah, they're not wearing a sign on their forehead. Excuse me, I'm a Fizbo. <laughs> they all look like buyers to each other. He could be a Fizbo. I could be a Fizbo. We're looking at each other like, oh, wow, boy, a lot of buyer activity here. <laughs> now, with all that perception of the buyer activity, the real buyers, we'll say you're a real buyer, the real buyers is their perception, I love this house. I want this house, but I better put in an offer now and make it a good one. Yes. You've all heard the, the, the saying, perception is reality. <clears throat> well, guess what? That's the reality. You want to have a lot of people at your open houses. Now, one thing I've done, I'm not even going to teach you this today, but one of the things that I've done in the past is the 45-minute open house. You have it from 1 to 145. When you advertise it on the internet or Facebook or whatever, all you, you don't mention anything much about the house. You just say, beautiful ranch. All offers must be in writing accompanied by a check. What does that signify to the people who are reading that? This is hot. Urgent, right? Now, you have it from 1 to 145. Oh, yeah, I forgot one thing. You also put in, I learned this from garage sales, no preview, no early previews. Now, if you tell these buyers it's 1 to 145, it's a hot house, no early previews, what time do they show up? No. They show up at 1230. Because no early previews, they want to cheat. They want to be there first. Oh, you can have so much fun with this. You know what you do? When you come and knock the door at 1230, you answer the door and say, yes, can I help you? Uh, we're here for the open house. Oh, okay, where did you hear about it? We saw it on the internet. Great. So then you saw that there was no early previews. We're going to be opening the door at 1. No problem. Close the door. <laughs> <laughs> now, what happens by 1 o'clock? you got 15 couples lined up out there. And they are like, you know, looking at each other. <laughs> what are you doing here at my house? <laughs> I don't like the way she's looking at my house. <laughs> so uh, that's a great thing. That's, that, that's a whole different thing. But that works great if you have a really hot-priced house. Okay? 
you're going to get multiple offers, and, and it's just it's just phenomenal. Okay, so all the Fizbo's and Spires, I'm just going to invite them to come visit my open house to see how I work. Now, the more of them that show up, plus the neighbors that show up, plus uh, uh, my, my social media people that show up, plus all the, the internet exposures show up, guess what? This Fizbo has not had a buyer stop by his house since Jimmy Carter was president. <laughs> and all of a sudden he sees all this activity. Folks, guess what? You're going to pick up more listings. Because now you can follow up with these people, or they'll even follow up with you. And say, can you do one of those open houses for me? Yes, I can. Sign here. Press hot. Third copy is yours. <laughs> okay. So these are the special open house invitations. Now, resolving the problem of the sign-in sheet. Okay, people give false information on the sign-in sheet, correct? Why? Why do they do that? And why don't they want to be contacted? They don't like salespeople. They don't want to be pressured. Let me ask you something. How many people here like to buy things? Is it fun to buy things? Yeah, you like to buy? How many people here like to be sold? No. Think about it. So they're going to lie to us. Now, do you ever lie? Lie like a rug. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Let's say that you're going to a, um, a big fancy party tonight and, and you have to buy a new dress. And it's last minute. You run into the department store. You start frantically going through the dresses. Somebody comes up to you, a clerk, and they say, may I help you? What do you say? Just yeah, I'm just looking. <laughs> now, are you just looking? No. no, you're buying. You have to buy. And you want to buy. You don't want to be sold. <clears throat> and that's what happens with open houses, why they will lie on the sign sheet. And we should not resent them for that. In fact, as you will find out a little bit later on, we tend to sometimes lie to them. That stings. Okay, so when will they give the correct information? Huh? W-I-I-F-M, write that down, W-I-W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? That's what they all want to know, with them. What's in it for me? So here's what we have found. <clears throat> you can go from having 90% of the people lie to having 90% of the people tell the truth. If you give them something. What I suggest, instead of a sign-in sheet, you mentioned before, an opportunity to win something. Now, I don't go with $25 gas cards, though. I go a little bit more upscale. So we have here, enter to win, and then what we're going to have, if selected as the winner, would you prefer to be notified by phone or email? I'm a closer. I'm a closer. Then I go right to name, address, city, zip, email, telephone. Got news for you folks. People won't lie on this because they think that if they do, they don't have a chance to win. Okay, just toss That's right. And I ask them certain questions, which they'll answer truthfully. Do you currently own or rent? Why do you want to know that? They have to have something to sell. They're yeah. There might be a potential listing there for you. If renting, are you currently on a lease? How long? 
No, been renting a room from mom and dad for the last 48 years. Okay, toss that one. Okay. Um, if you own, do you need to sell your house to buy? Some people do, some people don't. Now, I know down in Florida, my Sabbath sister lives down in Florida, and um, down people who go part of the time of the year up New York and part down there, they call them snowbirds. Yeah? You got snowbirds here? Yeah? One thing I learned, so you learn things all the time, because my sister told me that the people who go down there from like January through April are called snowbirds. But what do you call the people who live in Florida year round? Frogs. Because they stay till they croak. <laughs> oh, why, I'm old senior citizen. I can tell that joke. So. I find, um, I actually use um, an app called Open Home Pro. I, I'm familiar with it. Okay, and I, I found that people are more willing to fill in stuff on that for some reason, I guess, just because they feel cool typing on an iPad or something like that. But I find that consumers today are a lot more straightforward in telling you I don't want to give this information or rather than actually putting the wrong thing, they'll say I don't want to fill this out. Or, um, for instance, in filling out a form like this, I think, think what, what do you say when they say, well, do I need to fill out these questions, to, the whole thing, to enter the drawing? Yes. They actually yeah. say yes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is this an, oh, with a smile, of course. <laughs> Let me ask something. Is this an open house of a private residence? Or is this like a public, you know, diner where you walk in and I'm gonna use the restroom and then leave? You know, come on, what is it? Yeah. Now, have you ever heard of something, a little tiny thing that, oh, I've taught for a number of years now all over the it's called the law of agency. You ever hear law of agency? No? You better say yes, you're on camera. Okay. <laughs> Law of agency says we have certain fiduciary obligations. Okay? And um, we're supposed to be looking out for the interests of the homeowner, correct? What if a person does not want to divulge who they are? Yeah. In fact, a lot of agents nowadays are actually asking for a um, driver's license and making a photocopy right there. Yeah. Well, before taking it out. Yeah. Now, I'll, I'm going to be very, very honest with you. I don't know if that's, I, I won't say if I agree or disagree with that, okay, because I'm not even sure I'm tossed. But when I hear stories, and this is only maybe once a year you hear something like this, uh, but I know last year in Illinois, a beautiful, beautiful young blonde uh, realtor was having an open house uh, for a, uh, uh, a developer, and it was, it was Illinois, and, and she was murdered. Someone came in and shot her, okay? Now, don't get excited, okay, because that doesn't happen too often. You're more likely to get struck by lightning or something like that, but I, I'm just saying that, you know, security is something that we should take pretty seriously nowadays, okay? In fact, one of the things that I'm gonna recommend for everyone here, not just the ladies, but even, even you macho guys, take a self-defense course. Now they're just, I mean, I'm not saying you have to go, uh, you have to sign up for, uh, you got your keys, your car keys, you know, you have car keys, you have car keys? Okay, that's all right. Um, I know one of the things that I learned, in fact, yeah, you know what, let me take yours, that I learned many years ago with self-defense, and trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm a tough guy. I'm just old now. Okay. But carry your keys like this. Because if anybody attacks you, I don't care how petite a woman you are, okay? If they attack you and you take your keys and you're holding them like this between your fingers and you punch them in the eye, you don't have to have a powerful punch to do damage. And that's enough to, to get away. These little things that you learn. Um, I don't know if your board does 
any open house, I, I'm sorry, uh, any security, safety we, security? We there was a, a maybe time for another, another session. There was a gentleman, a gentleman <coughs> I knew, um, Andrew Wooten, who used to do a lot of these seminars for realtor boards, but he, he unfortunately had an accident, passed away uh, about a month ago. So he's a great guy, too. Um, we have a couple local folks that we've had in the past. Yeah. So. Okay, great. So I, I would suggest maybe that's something that you might want to do. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's always it's good. Guy, star. <clears throat> yep. The other thing, by in advance introducing yourself to the neighbors and letting them know that you're going to be there on that Saturday or Sunday, but also you have those other eyes looking out for any strange activity because it's their neighborhood. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because we have another option for you. So that's also a good way. Because now you've yeah. got a face-to-face -face contact. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. <laughs> if, <okay. laughs> if I give this to somebody and they say, I don't want to fill this out, all I have to do is say, let me ask something. If this was your house, would you want to know who was coming through? Now, I'm not even advising you to do this, but if you're suspicious, ask people to leave. Yeah, open house does not necessarily mean, you know, anyone off the street has the right to come into this private property, if you're suspicious. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Okay, so let's go back to these questions. Um, if you own, you need to sell your house to buy. Is your home currently on the market? Why is that important? You're working with the road. Yeah, you want to know the list with somebody, okay? Um, how long have you been looking for a new home? Since 1977, okay. <laughs> have you been pre-approved for a mortgage yet by a qualified lending institution? Would you like a no cost, no obligation, pre-approval for your mortgage by a qualified lending institution. And would you like to receive emails about future listings? Now those are pretty simple, straightforward questions, correct? Okay. Here's what I found. In order to win, most of the time they tell the truth. Now, as far as what we're going to have to win, let's get into that. I, you didn't ask the question, are you working with the realtor? Why I know I didn't. Yeah. Well, some of the questions, though, kind of let you know that. Yeah. I know, but just to ask if you're working with the realtor, yeah. you just want to know. Yeah. yeah. The reason why I didn't include that in the written thing is simply because of the fact that sometimes these purchasers, they don't understand buyer brokerage, agency, uh, agency relationships. And yes, are you working with a realtor? And they might be thinking, well, well yeah, I, I saw a guy last week. What was his name? I have no idea. You got his card? No, I threw it away. So, so I mean, that's why I didn't ask. Now, how many of you have the situation where a couple will walk in and tell you, I'm working with a realtor? What do you, how do you reply? How about just asking this? I understand, that's great. Do you have a, before I even ask who, do you have a, do you have a written agreement with them? Because they might say, well, no. Now, if they don't have a written agreement, is it, not, is it necessarily that they have a buyer brokerage agreement with a realtor? No, exactly. Now, I'm a little bit old fashioned in this respect. When I first learned buyer brokerage, oh, about a million years ago, you have the same legal obligations to them as you do to the homeowner whose listing you took. I understand today's real estate world I have a little bit of a problem, though, with a buyer broker just sending their buyers out to open houses. 
Anybody else have a problem with that? Okay. I do, and, and I'll tell you why. Because of the fact that if I'm representing their interests, this young couple, I'm representing their interests, and they come to my open house, okay, and I'm not there, could they fall into the hands of an unscrupulous broker who might take advantage of them? And it's because I wasn't there for them. I, I, just, I just feel that's, I don't know, like I say, I'm old fashioned. Um, I like to see it, if, you know, if you're, gonna be, uh, if you're gonna be representing somebody, if you got them to sign a six month or one year agreement to work exclusively with you, um, I think they almost owe it to them to, to be with them at open houses. That, that's how old fashioned I am. So anyhow. Not that I'm going to turn them away or shoot them or anything like that, okay? But, yeah. Getting back to the sign-in sheet, have you ever had the issue where people say, um, I'm going to take a look around and sign in after? Yeah, no, we don't do that here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my next, that's my next thing. Yeah, yeah, we don't do that here. Another idea for you. We put it outside and don't let them in. I'm only teasing. But no, I have another idea for you. Okay. All right. I believe in if you're going to have an open house, and I don't, folks, let me tell you something. I don't believe in having open houses every weekend. Okay? I really think it's bad for your health, it'll kill you. Okay? But I also believe in having occasional open houses. On good open on good houses that deserve it. Okay, so when you do it, make your open house an event, really special. Have a themed open house and market it that way. Let me ask something: If you have an opportunity to go to a party or a costume party, which is more fun? Costume party. What? It's a theme. Well, if you have an opportunity to go to a party or a St. Patrick's Day party, which is more fun? Of course. Well, it Say, no, no. I'm half Irish. Watch no, it. I, just, I, just, I think it's more work. Now I got to go to a costume. No, I said going to, not holding. So think about this. If you're a buyer, and you have rushing on time, would you be more likely to go to a themed open house or just an open house? A themed open house. Now, we're not going to make this too difficult. Here are a couple of themes that some of my students have used in the past very successfully. Here's to your health. Health is a big topic, correct? So what they do is they have a health conscious themed open house. Now, this one lady I know, she had her friend who was a nurse come and do free blood pressure screenings. And that's the way she advertised it. Get a free blood pressure screening. Kind of neat, correct? Mm -hmm. And if you're giving away something for that enter to win sign in sheet, what could you give away to, or what, what could they win in the raffle for the uh, health one? How about a hundred dollar gift card to a health spa? Would anybody here like that? Yeah? How about a hundred dollar gift card? You say you're not going to go a hundred? Relax. Calm, calm, right, right, right. don't, don't prejudge. Okay, hundred dollar gift card to a health food store. How many people would like to win that? Yeah. If you're like a large person, you may not want to. Sure, hundred dollars. You know how much food you can buy? If you like McDonald's, you're not gonna like that. Excuse me. 
you like McDonald's if you like fast food? I'm just curious. Are you gonna like eliminate? Are you gonna discriminate against big people? I'm not discriminating against anybody. Besides yeah, that, I've lost about 60 pounds. I'm, I'm, I'm asking questions. <laughs> oh, yeah. How is that discrimination? Well, there's some big people who want to be healthy. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I have family that's big and doesn't care. That's Me too. That's I'm, 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 I'm the skinniest person in my whole family. <laughs> so I don't want to deter a large group from coming to my own house because they feel like I don't like them. It's my point. Oh, oh, get, get that bottle of Jack Daniels ready. This young man needs it. I'm telling you. No! My house is going to have alcohol for sure. No, here's the thing. Here's the thing, okay? If you're going to have a themed open house for help, and I know people have done this, okay? They got great numbers of people coming in. Nobody said, I'm not going in there because I'm 400 pounds. They didn't. Matter of fact, I'm sure if I asked her, they probably had people who were overweight, out of shape, and like I said, want to eat healthy. Maybe want their free blood pressure screening. I don't think that's discriminatory at all. Now, if you're out of shape and at the front door, I say, whoa, you can't come in here. That's discriminatory. I wouldn't do that. But if I'm not interested in the gift card, I'm just not going to register. That's right. I'll look at the house. And exactly. No, it's not discriminatory at all, please. Oh my God, don't worry about that one bit. Like I said, if I turn around and stop him at the door, excuse me, uh, we just checked your blood pressure, it's a little high. Get out! <laughs> yes? How do you get around that like, say, my husband loves the same thing as I do, but I just don't want to invite anybody that likes that? We're going to, we're going, we're going to, first of all, relax. I know what your broker's saying. Can you repeat the question? I know what your broker's saying. She said, what if her broker says no monetary value whatsoever to anybody who is not licensed? Relax. Calm down. We're going to get there in a minute. Here's another theme. Baseball. Anybody here a baseball fan? Yeah? Okay, good. So here's, here's what this person did. They had a CD of all different baseball songs and stuff like that. And what did they give away? Tickets. They gave away tickets. Yeah. Okay. Um, they also had a friend of theirs at the open house with a little <coughs> box, and he had hot dogs in it. And people could go out in the back patio, and he'd be like, hot dog, hot dog, get your hot dogs. Okay? That's what we say in New York. <laughs> People knew what they understood. Yeah, they understood. I know we may scare you, but they understood. And then that was all part of You go to the ballpark, you have, you have hot dogs? Yeah, exactly. That's part of the thing. Here is an, an gardening. Flowers, veggies for them here like the garden. No? Do you know anybody who does? Yes. Is there anything you like? <laughs> Gardening. Yeah, garden. Okay, good. So here's what we do. Make it an event. Oh, by the way, before I show you this, this just happened. I did this seminar about about a month ago, just about a month ago, uh, for a large brokerage firm in New York. One of the agents really took off with it. And it was an upscale home. I think it was like in the $900,000 range. And, but it was kind of a weird home, like a strange home, very like artsy type, it would appeal to a very artsy group or whatever. So he decided to have a themed open house. It was so wild that the New York newspaper, Newsday, picked up on it, wrote an article, I'm going to show it to you. The local news station, TV cameras came and did it. He had over a hundred people show up and sold the house for full price. Here was his themed open house. And he just, he just sent me a thank you note about this. Come to Oyster Bay Open House and get a psychic reading. Now, you might say to yourself, I couldn't do anything like that. When was the last time you had a $950,000 listing sell for full price the first week. Okay? 
So all I'm just saying is, and, and this, this was from the out of New York News Day. So just like, you know, there, there are crazy things. You, you can be a little bit different. So if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Let's do this, though. Let's go back to the other themes. We're going to end up giving them something to keep and remember. How many times do people go to an open house and the only thing they walk out with is a highlight sheet. True? Yeah. And you want to get future <coughs> listings from these people? You got nothing to remember you about. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to give them little gifts, gift bags. So you might have 20, 25, 30 gift bags on the table. And if they say they'll sign in first, they'll sign in last, no gift bag. Now let me ask you this. You're going to an open house and you see gift bags all over the dining room table. You don't want one? Right? Everyone's going to want to leave with one, correct? Well, here's something that I suggest that helps with security, that helps with Costs, you don't want to do a $100 gift card, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. But you could have a strategic partner do it. Does anybody here work with a mortgage broker, a lender? Yeah? Now, let me ask something. Today, with the way the market is, do you think a lot of these Mortgage brokers would love to pick up 5, 10, 15, 20 leads on buyers. Yeah? So what you want to do is this, folks. You want to have a strategic partner that you trust and that you can work with long term. You give him all the leads that he wants. Give him all the deals that he wants. But part of the deal is they come to your open house. They sit at your open house. They can turn around and provide pre-approvals. You can take pre-approval applications. Um, they can do things like provide the $100 gift card so you don't have to and your broker doesn't worry. Okay? Well, there's nothing to worry about, actually. So what happens is they provide it. You can even have the prize is courtesy of you know, a hundred dollar gift card to uh, a, a, a health spa, uh, four tickets opening day to such and such a, a team, whatever, a um, hundred dollar gift card from Lowe's or Home Depot or a local nursery for those who are gardening. So let's look at this. What other things would we have? So rather than just walking out of the open house with a highlight sheet. They walk away with things like this. Uh, let me see here. Okay. In here, we have the highlight sheet. In here, we have 10 things you are not to do when applying for a mortgage. Is this healthy, help, helpful information? Anybody here almost have a deal die because the buyers went out and bought new furniture before they closed on the house? Yes. On credit? Yeah, exactly. Something like that. And because of the fact that in this particular case, the theme is um, gardening, we have top 10 tips for maintaining a healthy lawn. We also include some gifts such as flower seeds. And of course, what, what flower seeds is the perfect flower seeds for realtors? Forget-me-nots. You could staple your business card right to it. And you might want to get some gardening gloves. 99 cents. These are four for a dollar. And we're spending a lot of money? No, we're not. But now they walk away with all of this. Do they remember you? Absolutely. Well, let's say we have the health one. 
Again, they walk away with the highlight sheet. Ten things not to do when applying for a loan. And in this case, we have ten healthy lifestyle tips for children. And hey, you can read it with your children, stuff like that. Oh, by the way, here's something else that people like to do. Since this is about health, okay, we can we'll give them what? <laughs> An apple, a low-fat granola bar, right? Is that in the theme? Again, very expensive? No, especially if you steal these items. <laughs> okay. But here's something that some agents do also. How many people do a um, virtual tour of your listings? Do a virtual tour? I know an agent who likes to make copies of the virtual tour and then does a commentary on the house and gives the people a, a DVD. It's so cheap to make nowadays. And that's all part. Do you think they'll remember your house? Do you think they'll remember you? Do you think that if there's somebody there who needs to sell their house, they might want to give you the listing rather than all the other agents who just give them a highlight sheet? The baseball open house. Again, we have the highlight sheet. Ten things not to do in applying for a loan. And in this case, there's a few things I could add. 2013 schedule for the Charlotte Knights. Anybody here go to the Charlotte Knights baseball game? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Fun? Yeah, sure. Let me tell you something. In my travels, and I travel a lot, I love seeing minor league baseball stadiums and the games. They are so much fun. Now, how much would four tickets be worth? Maybe 40 bucks? So what if there was a hundred dollar gift card that could be used for memorabilia, hot dogs, things like that, right? So we have that. We might also include some baseball cards. And what would a ball game be without Cracker Jacks? Now, don't get this mixed up, though, with the health one. <laughs> okay? So think about this now. You have all of this. You go to, when people go to open houses, do they usually try to go to two or three each weekend or more? Yes? And do they go to weekend open houses every weekend for months on end? Right? So what happens is now, they go to all these open houses, they walk away with the highlight sheet, can't remember the agent's name, they come to your open house, you have a theme, you're playing uh, baseball music, you have somebody giving out hot dogs, they take away one of those packets, they have a chance of winning a $100 gift card to the Charlotte Knights baseball game. How do they feel about you? Do they want to work with you? And how much money have you invested? You have a strategic partner, correct? That's what your strategic partner is there for. Now here's another thing. The strategic partner also is an extra set of eyes. True? Yeah. Okay. Do you want an even another set of eyes? Yeah. Now you said that you're new in real estate, correct? Yeah. Let's say you're brand new, I'm a top producer, you would love to learn from me. So I turn and say, great, I'm going to have an open house this weekend. You want to come by and help me out? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share some of the, the purchase leads with you, okay? And I'm just going to ask you to do a couple of things, and then you just, you know, that's it. All right? You'll learn. So now, I'm going to make him, what was, what's your name? Josh. Josh. I'm going to make Josh the official greeter. I believe every open house should have a greeter. And they don't even have to be licensed. It could be your brother-in-law. It could be your husband or your, or your wife. 
just make sure you train them not to talk about real estate. They cannot give their uh, input, they cannot give their opinions about real estate. They're just there as an official greeter. And here's what they do. Keep the door closed, people knock, the official greeter opens the door. Hi, how are you? My name is Josh. I'd like to welcome you to our open house. Joe over there is he's kind of busy right now. He is the realtor in charge. Okay, He'll be with you in a few minutes. In the meantime, if you'd like, we have some refreshments in the kitchen. And also, we have a mortgage broker there that can help answer any questions you might have about mortgages. And we also have um, a chance for you to enter and win for our grand prize today uh, of a hundred dollar gift card to a, a health spa. Does that keep them busy while I'm showing the other couple the house? Absolutely. Does it give them an opportunity to put them right in front of the mortgage broker who's your strategic partner and spending the money on this? Yes. That's what I mean. This is an event. Now, think about this. Over Saturday and Sunday, the buyer goes to six or seven open houses. <clears throat> Which one are they going to remember? Yeah? Now, let me ask you this. Let's say I'm going on a listing. Just a listing. Have you ever heard a homeowner say, well, how are you different from the other realtors? How are you different from the other realtors? Did you ever get that question? Who here has heard that question? How are you different? Let me ask something. Did you ever, and I don't want to get into this because of, of the, the legalities, <coughs> but if you ever decide that you wanted to give yourself a raise and charge a higher commission, is this an opportunity to justify a higher commission? When a homeowner says, well, why are you charging X? when the other brokers are charging 1% less than X. Well, let me explain why. How important do you think open houses are to the marketing of your home, Mrs. Smith? Think open houses are important? Yes. You want to have at least one open house? Perhaps two or three? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Do you want, have you ever been to an open house? Yes. Pretty boring? Yes. How would you like to, if, if your open house on your house was an event. We have a theme, we give out gift bags full of prizes, we turn around and have them enter uh, a raffle to win a, a really nice prize, and this way we follow up with them. Is that something you want? Or would you rather go with the discount broker? Yeah. Yeah. So how am I different? That's how am I different. That's one way I'm different. Yeah. See, let me tell you something. Over the last 10, 12 years, real estate, let's say 12 years ago, 15 years ago, real estate, they used to make fun of it because they were so far behind the times in technology. So much so that over the last 10 to 15 years, almost all the courses in real estate are about technology. And, and which is good, but there's been very few sales training seminars, far fewer than there were when I started, okay? You gotta remember, you're a salesman. When I go on a listing appointment, and that, that's my great love in life is, is listings. When I go on a listing appointment, and I'm there to persuade the homeowner, it's not just to go blah, 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 like show and tell. It's to really persuade them, how am I different? Why do I deserve this commission? Why, why you are going to benefit by listing at this price rather than this price? That's what salesmanship is all about. So I'm going to use the open house theme as a way of persuading homeowners to listen with me. How am I different? I'm far different. But let me ask something first. Would you be more inclined to list with somebody who was different, who was a little bit more progressive in marketing your home? Yes? So if I can prove to you today that I am totally different, can we go ahead and start marketing your home today? Yes? I got her saying yes before I even explained the themed open house. That's salesmanship. Okay? 
too often we play show and tell. Now, we're going to give them something to keep and to remember. So here's the contents of the gift bag, a flyer featuring highlights of your home with your contact info, your business card, so that can be you and your strategic partner, a DVD, the virtual tour, plus comments, 10 things you should never do when applying for a mortgage. Why do you need title insurance? Anybody here know why you need title insurance? I love, I love it when we tell buyers you need title insurance. And why? I don't know, I was told that. <laughs> okay. okay, so here's what happens. You can even explain to them in a little, just get off the incident, why do they need title insurance? And then fun items related to the theme. Now, when setting the stage, when setting the stage for the open house, you want to seek to reach all five senses. You see, when something as, as big and as personal and emotional as a home, and by the way, psychologists have studied and have shown that the word that gets the greatest emotional impact on a person is mother. But number two is home. Dads, we're, I don't know, 180 or something like that. <laughs> we're way down there. I think we're, we're behind, you know, Elmo from Sesame Street. Okay. So in setting the stage, seek to reach all five senses. Visual. Does this home appeal visually? Do they need some staging help? Now, here's the thing about staging. Um, there are professional stagers, and then there are professional realtors who know a little bit about staging. I got news for you. Um, long before we called it staging, that was part of our job, was to tell people, you know what? Let's remove the personal items. Let's, let's rake up the leaves on the front lawn. Let's remove all dead furry animals from the living room. Things like that. Okay? We used to do that. You can be a stager for most listings. Just give it a little bit. Clear out the closets. Thin out the closets. Bring the clothes over to your sister's house or whatever. Make the closet look bigger. Remove all the personal items because, in fact, people want to buy their home, not your old home. They want their new home, not your old home. Okay? Things like that. So make sure that, that the home is appealing. Anybody here ever take a listing where the, the <laughs> homeowner was just a slob? And they thought the house was clean because there was only, a, you know, eight or ten dirty dishes in the sink. Yeah, exactly. Well, guess what? Be a real pro and tell them. Say, look, you know what? I think your house needs some professional cleaning help. And if you really believe in it, um, you know, maybe you could pay for it up front and collect it on the back end of your commission. Okay, and hire a professional cleaning crew to get in there and do it. If the homeowner, you know, didn't want to do it or whatever, didn't want to pay for it. Okay. Another sense that we want to appeal to, listening. I very, very much believe in the power of music. Soothing sounds or a nice little quiet, upbeat tempo, things like that, okay? Um, when you're going through a house. Who here has ever gone through a house where music was playing? Did you find it appealing? Even if it wasn't your genre of, of you know, right. your favorite genre. It was, it was something that was appealing, though, correct? Okay. So now think about that. If I'm having an open house on a, uh, a condo unit that is mostly for young people, what type of music ought to be playing? <laughs> a little more up-to-date, maybe not hip-hop, but a little bit more up-to-date. Who's up to date today? I don't know. Contemporary pop. Yeah, contemporary pop. I don't know who it is, but something like that. Now, what if I'm, I'm, I'm holding open a house for a 55 and better community? Yeah, Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Michael Buble, something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you want to appeal to that sense as well. Not even just the music, I went to 
a, a showing, it was a builder showing. Yeah. Out in Providence, it's a new subdivision, upscale. And you go outside and they had the patio furniture and all, but you could hear the water running. Oh, that's great. It's just, it made you want to sit down. Yeah. And people just sat there. Yeah. They didn't want to move. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but they just enjoyed the whole, and then they had the music playing in the house. and for visuals in the kitchen. I don't know if it was real or not, but they had like cheese and wine well, we're and fruit there. set up and all. And we're getting there. You left hungry. <laughs> <laughs> what about smell? Scented candles. Has anybody yeah, listed a house yeah. that was occupied by pets? Mm -hmm. Numerous pets who had run of the house. Okay, the greatest invention I've ever found in real estate, Febreze. <laughs> Open windows, spray liberally, hope for the best. <laughs> but yes, even in a house that does not have a heavy pet odor, sometimes could use a little freshening up, you know? Maybe the homeowner had a cigar the night before, or I loved it. I always loved it. They have a Saturday open house, and Friday night, what did they have for dinner? Fish. Yeah. And as soon as you walk in, it's like, whoa. It hits you. And I love fish. But you know what? It doesn't make the most pleasant odor for an open house. So all these things you want to look at. I am going to tell you, get some Febreze. Keep it in the trunk of your car. Because of the fact, if you're having an open house, and on that day, rather than be surprised, when they leave, you go around, sh -sh 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 -sh. it does amazing, amazing things. Taste. Should we serve food at a public open house? I don't always like to have it in the house because if there's families and kids and they come and take food and start going in, into all the rooms and I don't want to mess up my Now remember, home. this is a public open house on a private property. You are allowed to make certain rules. All food must be consumed in the kitchen, period. Put up a sign. They're not allowed to take cookies and start traveling through the house. And don't be afraid to stop them. And that's where you have your strategic partner there. Okay? But I do believe in serving something. Okay? It could be as simple as cookies and lemonade. It could be donuts and a hot pot of coffee. Okay? If you're having a theme like with a baseball, they serve the, the hot dogs, which is great. Okay? Um, health food, you can have a nice healthy um, uh, pasta salad, but with a sign. All food must be consumed in the kitchen. Does what you serve, uh, does price point maybe have anything to do with... Price point, yeah, I'd stay away from the caviar and lobster. <laughs> I mean, price point of Well, actually, you know what? I know what you mean. Yes, it does make a difference. <clears throat> if I'm selling a home for three and a half million, uh, I might serve some uh, very, very fine aged cheeses from Europe and some uh, nice bottle of, of wine that they would recognize as like a $100 bottle of wine or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>